Your heart has made its choice, then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh! I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. I am in the middle of something, Flame. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who's... This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officer's Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. Wait, does this mean our new professor is... No, I really can't believe it! But I was speaking to you so casually, as though we were companions. Oh, I am so sorry, Professor. You just look the same age as the rest of us, and... Oh, and, and I'm sorry I just said that too. I really must watch my tongue. You say that, but I just don't know about all of this. I'll admit, it doesn't sit well with me either. After all, we wish to show you due respect. Sure, but if the professor says it's okay, shouldn't that be enough? That is, if your highness can consent to such a thing. After all, we're already speaking this way to our future king, so we may as well relax our speech with our professor too, right? Well, we're not in the kingdom, so it only goes to follow that we should all speak companionably. <sighs> I concede. If the professor says it's fine, we ought to accept that kindness gratefully. As for me, I'm not sure I can manage. You don't have to force yourself if it's too difficult. You're fine with that too, right, Professor? Having heard of your skills, I'm eager to meet you in battle. Come to the training ground later. There, you will show me what you're capable of. You aren't wasting any time, are you, Felix? As it were, count me in for any such battle. <laughs> Pardon me, but I would also love to observe you in battle for future reference, if that's okay with you. Ash, I won't have you speak of merely watching. You should join us as well. <laughs> if you get injured, simply say the word and I'll patch you up straight away. Your Highness, do take care not to go overboard. You worry too much to do. I'll be fine, I promise. My companions, is there not something inherently wrong with crossing blades as a way to bond with each other? Huh, I never thought of it that way. Well, if that's how you feel, I suppose you'll just stay behind while the rest of us are at the training ground? Ingrid, my dearest friend, you really are too harsh on me. Well then, Professor, what do you think? As you can see, the Blue Lion House is a lively bunch, but you'll find none who work harder. I'm certain we'll cause our fair share of trouble, but I'm very much looking forward to the year.
Say, while you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything, about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. Crests are a fascinating topic. But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. As I said, Crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest, and you just happened to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Yes, of course. I'll get to the bottom of it straight away. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think. There are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrill! <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm. What could this line here be indicating? Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps... What in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. With each moon, professors of the Officers' Academy receive a schedule for the month ahead. It notes the days on which events and missions will take place that month. Pay careful attention to your schedule, so that you may thoughtfully plan what you intend to do each month, and when.
These are the students' quarters. To better help you supervise them, you also have a room here. Your room is here at the end. Commoner students also reside on the first floor, while the second is primarily for students of noble birth. As a rule, we try to avoid discrimination based on social status here, but the nobility can be quite insistent when it comes to matters of propriety. Speaking of, it would be best for you to avoid improper conduct. I expect you to set a good example for the students. Okay. I'm not too keen on the professor of my class. I really hope to focus more on strategy. Hmm. Maybe I should talk to my professor about transferring to a different class. Ugh. Huh? Hey, Teach. I hear there's gonna be a mock battle between the houses. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit concerned about facing an elite mercenary like you. Maybe take it easy on us. What do you say? adjusted to life at the academy yet? Me, I'm still not used to it. I'm not one for all this studying and training. Hey. I'm Captain Gerald's first and best apprentice. I can beat anyone, Professor. Even you, if I have to. It may have been only for a short time, but I learned from the absolute best. Professor, if you got spare time, wanna join me for a trip and we could try to pick up beautiful girls. Or not. I'm kidding. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Professor, I've got a small favor to ask. This is the Golden Deer House. You're in charge of a different class, right? Too bad we won't see more of each other. I'm happy to learn from you if the opportunity comes up. Our house is that of the Golden Deer. Do you know the significance of that name, Professor? Golden Deer are sacred creatures said to have protected Lester since time immemorial. All three of the houses have a meaning behind their name. You should feel free to ask around if that sort of knowledge interests you. Yes, 
it's true that I'm the only commoner in the Black Eagle House. I knew that before the first day of class. Those people are simply exhausting. Before I came to the Officer's Academy, I attended a school of magic in the Kingdom Capital. That's where I met Annie. That's what I call Annette. Oh, I guess Lawrence was at the School of Magic, too. But Annie was always just so nice to me, even though I was older. She's my best friend in the world. The Blue Lion House derived its name from the honorary title of the first King of Fargus. Lug, the King of Lions, wore brilliantly blue garments. His chivalric exploits are recorded in multiple legends. The library holds various historical accounts regarding him and the Blue Lions. If you find time, you should read them. They're filled with insights. Listen. Do you know the provenance of our class name? The Eagle. That refers to the twin-headed eagle on the Adrestian Empire's coat of arms. And black? Do you know the eagle? And black is the traditional color of the Empire's armor. Hence, black eagles. What? I care nothing of friendship. If you have no business here, leave. Listen to this. Wow, Yuritsa sure seems strong. I kind of thought he was going to be the new professor assigned to our class. After that teacher ran away during our outdoor training, I figured Yuritsa was a natural replacement. I was surprised when you were suddenly appointed professor instead. I don't think I could hold my own against Yuritsa in battle. Well, I could probably take you, though. You really think so? With enough training, I'm sure I'll beat you someday. If you continue to insist on distracting me, I will have no choice but to get rid of you. Joking, of course. <laughs> I trust you're eager to face the Black Eagles in battle. Enjoy the thrill of anticipation while it lasts. Soon you'll wish you had chosen to lead our house instead. His Highness has said that he trusts you, and I have no cause for doubt. But if you mistreat him in any way, I will take action. I have a request. myself. My brother would not be pleased if he heard you saying such things. The monastery is kind enough to provide a sanctuary for my brother and I. He's the only family I have. Might you help me with a favor?
I'm busy. Do you want something? I can't right now, but let's fight soon. I look forward to beating you. I really need to eat. I can't hold out until the next meal. Why can't the dining hall stay open all the time? I need to keep eating if I want to get stronger. Greetings. Here at the monastery, I have had many great learnings from many great people. I am hopeful to have learnings from you, too. As forever, I will do my best trying. The Great Tree Moon is the best time of the year for naps. I could just forget all about my assignment. Yeah. <sighs> Let's see. I'm a little busy. If you're looking for the greenhouse, it's right there. See it? Looks like a greenhouse. That's it. I'm a little busy. Wait. Oh, did you come to look at the plants too? The greenhouse here is really incredible. There are so many rare flowers I'd never seen back home, and herbs I never even knew existed. My adoptive father is the real expert. He taught me everything I know about herbs, including how to tell them apart and how to make medicines. You should try looking around the greenhouse sometime if the mood strikes you. Maybe something will catch your eye. Princess, the Crown Prince, and the heir to the Alliance's leading house. This is one exceptional year, that's for sure. If you're a teacher here, you better watch your step. If anything were to happen to those kids, well, suffice to say that it could harm the reputation of the Church of Saros, which we've spent almost a millennium establishing. Professor, nothing to report. By the by, have you ever regretted a decision and wished you could go back and undo it? It's too bad there's no lesson for how to turn back the old clock, huh? But I suppose a bad decision isn't worth all that fuss anyhow. question for you, if that's all right. 
You haven't seen a man with hair the same color as mine, a scowling face, and a generally gloomy demeanor, have you? Well, yes. It's a bit difficult to explain. Please just let me know if you do see him, okay? Indeed. As part of our commitment to the goddess, the knights undertake various missions across all of Fodlan. Assisting with the education of young nobles is also a part of our sacred duty. Yes. I hear a member of House Stressville, the ruling family of the Empire, has entered the Officers' Academy for the first time in ages. It is said that the Adrestian Empire's very founding was aided by none other than Saint Seros. That is why the crest of Seros is on the Imperial flag. In recent years, a rift has developed between the Empire and the Church. Let us hope this will be a good opportunity for both parties to reforge their close relationship of years past. Here's an idea. There are two types of crests. Major crests manifest their power most effectively, while minor crests are slightly weaker. It is said that the closer a person's blood relation is to various saints and heroes, the higher their chance of bearing a major crest. Of course, there are also examples of major crests manifesting in children whose parents bear no crest whatsoever. The exact nature of how and why crests are inherited is still a mystery. Hi, Professor. Have you gotten around to visiting the library yet? It's absolutely loaded with valuable information. I only wish I wasn't burdened with the necessity of sleep, so I could spend all my hours there. In a manner, yes. But it's more that I want to learn as much as I possibly can. <laughs> 